Okay, so today we are diving into WM27 Malador Witches Academy dot PDF. And right off the bat, this is not your typical Academy handbook. Yeah, it's more like someone handed us a stack of uh, maps and rumors and told us to figure it out ourselves. Right. We're talking about a deep dive here, not a guided tour. Exactly. We're piecing together clues about Malador Witches Academy, the yes. magic system, the weird vibes. It's going to be fun. It really does feel like the Academy itself is like a main character here. Totally. The document mentions it's surrounded by all these different zones they call hexes, each with its own brand of magic. Like the cherry blossom grove. Oh, yeah, healing and, like, renewal vibes there. Right. You can practically smell the flower petals just reading about it. Then you've got places like Shadow Glen, super creepy, especially at night. Makes you wonder if those whispers are just the wind or something else. You must think twice about exploring at midnight, that's for sure. <laughs> Although the document does say that rumor about people vanishing from Shadow Glen is false. Still not taking any chances. You're always smart. So speaking of different kinds of magic, we've got to talk about these covens. And these aren't your grandma's sewing circles, right? No, these are like your magic majors, each one with its own specialty. We've got four, it looks like. So let's dive in. So first up, we've got the Cherry Blossom Coven. Very nature -y healing magic. Yeah, they seem very connected to the earth, all about growth and vitality. It makes you wonder if they have a special connection to that cherry blossom grove we were talking about earlier. I bet they do. Now, on a totally different note, there's the celestial enclave, all about divination and cosmic energy. Stars, moons, the whole nine yards. Exactly. They're tapping into the universe itself. It's wild how the document presents all these different schools of magic side by side. Right, like you've got the Cherry Blossom Coven all about the Earth, and then the Celestial Enclave looking to the stars for answers. Makes you think about balance, you know. Definitely. And then there's the Elementalists Guild. They're all about Earth, Air, Fire, and Water. Classic elemental magic, but, you know, it's got to be tricky. Oh, yeah. One wrong move, and you've summoned a hurricane during your final exam. No thanks. And then we have the Shadow Syndicate. Ah, yes. The masters of illusion and deception, they're all about manipulating shadows and bending perception. They sound like they could be either allies or serious villains. Maybe a little of both. That's what makes them so interesting. And speaking of interesting, the document mentions some seriously intriguing locations within the Academy. Oh yeah, like the Hall of Echoes where sound gets amplified. And it's guarded by something super sensitive to noise. Talk about a challenge. How do you even approach a place like that? Right. Stealth is key, for sure. Then there's the Oasis of Time sounds peaceful, right? An oasis in the middle of a magical academy sounds amazing. Sounds can be deceiving with this one. The document says the magic there messes with time. Spend too long in the oasis and you could age years and minutes. Whoa. Talk about high stakes relaxation. The real kicker is you can supposedly control the time magic by solving a riddle. Now that's a brain teaser I'd love to try. Okay, but hold on. Yeah. We've got to talk about these rumors about the hexes surrounding the academy. It's like a game of magical telephone. Some are true, some are way out there. Like that one about finding a fallen star in Galaxy's Glade and getting a wish. Yeah, the document says that one's a bust. But apparently Galaxy's Glade is the place to be for divination. So no wishes. But you might get some cosmic guidance instead. I'll take it. <laughs> so we've got magical locations surrounding the academy and even within its walls. But what about things to do? Ah, you're talking about the Melissite Mines. Right. It sounds like a classic dungeon crawl with different challenges in each room. Absolutely. The Crystal Cavern is supposed to be gorgeous, full of sparkling Melissite. Okay. But there's always a catch, right? Of course. The Crystal Cavern is also home to wisps, and they're not as harmless as they seem. All that glitters is not Melissite, I guess. Hmm. This next part is what really got me hooked, though the document mentions pledging allegiance to a coven. Oh yeah, this is where it gets serious. It's like choosing your Hogwarts house, but with actual magical benefits and drawbacks. Right. Like if you side with a shadow syndicate, you become amazing itself, but casting spells in daylight becomes way harder. Talk about a trade-off. It really makes you think about which magic you value most. We also get glimpses of some interesting characters in this document. Yeah, like Professor Eleonora Nightshade, the headmistress. Master of dark magic, but fiercely protective of her students. She sounds fascinating. I'd love to know what her classes are like. Yeah. And then there are the magical items. Oh, you mean like the elixir of renewal? Yeah. The one sip and you're young again. <laughs> Talk about a hot commodity. The document says it's crazy valuable. You can only get it through bartering. 
what would you even trade for something like that? A younger version of yourself. Right. It makes you think about the price of immortality and who gets to decide. I feel like we barely scratched the surface of this whole thing. Yeah, it's like we've been handed the first chapter of a really good book and now we want the rest of the story. Exactly. So tell me, if you were stepping into Malador Witch's Academy for the first time, what kind of witch would you be drawn to? Ooh, that's a tough one. I mean, the Cherry Blossom Coven sounds so peaceful and connected to nature. Right. But then you've got the Celestial Enclave gazing at the stars for answers. And don't forget about the raw power of the Elementalist Guild. Or the mystery surrounding the Shadow Syndicate. It's like each coven has its own unique pull. It makes you wonder if you get to study all of them or if you have to pick just one. Ooh, imagine if there was a secret society within the Academy dedicated to mastering magic from all four covens. Now that's an idea for a spin-off if I've ever heard one. A group of witches who've mastered all the disciplines their magic would be off the charts. They'd be practically unstoppable. This is what I love about these deep dives. Yeah. We started with just a document, and now our imaginations are running wild. It's like we've opened a door to a whole new world, and it's up to us to explore it. Exactly. So to everyone listening, think about this. What kind of magical class would you add to Malador Witches Academy? What skills would your class focus on? What challenges would they face? The possibilities are endless. This deep dive may be over, but the adventure is just beginning. So keep exploring, keep imagining, and who knows, maybe we'll see you at Malador Witches Academy someday.